Namaskaram. This discussion involves two lectures for clear understanding of this problem. First one is an intuitive approach and second one is mathematical. Welcome to the first lecture. In this session, I am trying to explain some motivations for why we divide by n-1 in sample variance. For easy understanding, we consider a finite population. Suppose x1, x2, etc, xn be a sample of size n from a population y1, y2, etc, ym of size m. The population mean mu is defined as 1 by m sigma i is equal to 1 to m yi. In general, the population parameters are unknown. For example, suppose we have to find the average life of a bulb mu produced by a company. To calculate this, we have to measure the life of all the bulbs produced by the company, which is almost impossible. So we try to estimate the average life of the bulb mu using a sample. For this, we define sample mean x bar. So using sample mean x bar, we try to estimate the population mean mu. Okay, then what is the analogous definition of sample mean? It is sample mean x bar is equal to 1 by n sigma i is equal to 1 to n xi. Is it a good estimate of mu? Fortunately, yes. Here sample mean x bar is a good estimate of mu. The term good is relative. Here good means average of all sample mean of size n is mu. There are m raised to such samples because, because the sample x1, x2, etc, xn are independent. So x1 can choose any value from the population y1, y2, etc, yn. So x1 has m choices and x2 is independent of x1. Therefore, x2 also has m choices. Similarly, xn also has m choices. So by product rule, there are total m raised to n such samples are there. So there are total m raised to n samples of size n. I shall explain this concept with an example in the next lecture because I don't want to divert from the topic right now. Mathematically, this means expectation of x bar equal to mu. This x bar is called unbiased estimate of mu. This also will be proved in the next lecture. Next we are going to define population variance. Suppose x1, x2, x3, xn be a sample of size n from a population of size m with mean mu. Then population variance sigma square is defined as 1 by m sigma i is equal to 1 to m y i minus mu whole square. So population variance is the average of square of deviations from the mean mu. Then what is the analogous definition of sample variance? It is the average of square of deviation from the mean x bar. Here we use sample mean x bar. But this formula has a problem for which we have to first understand the desirable properties of sample variance s square. As similar to sample mean x bar, average of all sample variances of size n should be sigma square. Mathematically, this means expectation of s square equal to sigma square. Now coming to the problem with the formula. Consider a sample x1, x2, etc, xn from a population of mean mu. Suppose mu is known. Then what is the best sample variance? Recollecting the definition of population variance, which is the average of square of deviation from the mean mu. So the best sample variance is defined by s mu square is equal to average of squares of deviation from mu for the sample x i. So far it is good because it is an unbiased estimate of sigma square. That is expectation of s mu square equal to sigma square. This can be easily verified by yourself. But there is an another problem with this formula. Usually the population parameters are unknown. Here mu is unknown. So we are forced to define sample variance using sample and its mean. Thus we define sample variance as 1 by n sigma i is equal to 1 to n xi minus x bar whole square. We use x bar instead of mu. But this estimate has another problem. To address this problem we use the inequality sn square is less than or equal to s mu square and sn square equal to s mu square only when mu equal to x bar. Proof of this will be shown in next lecture. In most of the cases, this mu is not equal to x bar. So sn square is strictly less than s mu square. We know that s mu square is a good estimate of sigma square. 
but sn square is less than s mu square so sn square is an underestimate of sigma square anyway sn square is not a good estimate of sigma square in order to get good estimate we have to increase sn square how do we do this this can be done by decreasing the denominator n so we should decrease the denominator to get a good estimate of sigma square the next question is how much at this juncture we don't know so next we analyze the same problem from another perspective that is in terms of degrees of freedom degrees of freedom is the maximum number of independent observations here independent observation means those values which are free to move for example consider a sample x1 x2 x3 from a population with mean mu and variance sigma square we know that sample mean x bar equal to x1 plus x2 plus x3 by 3 we are going to understand the denominator 3 in terms of degrees of freedom x1 can be any observation from the population therefore x1 is free to move similarly x2 and x3 are also free to move so here the number of freedom for this calculation is 3 which is nothing but the degrees of freedom similarly we are going to analyze s mu square suppose mu is non whatever be the value of mu x1 x2 and x3 are free therefore these three terms are free to move so number of degrees of freedom is 3 so we have analyzed these two well defined formulas in terms of degrees of freedom so next we try to define sample variance in terms of degrees of freedom suppose mu is unknown we draw three independent observations with the sample mean x bar here x1 is free therefore x1 minus x bar whole square is also free second observation x2 can take any value therefore this also free but the case of x3 is different if x1 x2 and x bar are known then x3 is fixed since x3 equal to 3x bar minus x1 minus x2 so x3 minus x bar whole square has no freedom so the number of degrees of freedom for this calculation gets reduced to 2 i will demonstrate these two with an example consider two cases case 1 mu is known assume that mu is equal to 8 case 2 mu is unknown assume that x bar equal to 6 in both cases x1 and x2 are free for example we assume that x1 equal to 5 and x2 equal to 3 in first case x3 can take any value so here the degrees of freedom is 3 But in case two, x three equal to three x bar minus x one minus x two. That is equal to that is equal to ten. So x three has no freedom. So x three will be ten. So in second case, only two degrees of freedom. So number of degrees of freedom is three minus one. That is two. So in first case, degrees of freedom is n, and in second case, degrees of freedom is n minus one. thus using the concept of degrees of freedom we define sample variance s square as 1 by n minus 1 sigma i is equal to 1 to n x i minus x bar whole square thus from the above discussions we get these two observations denominator should be decreased denominator is n minus 1 the interesting thing is that both the observations are in same direction these are two good reasons to define sample variance s square as 1 by n minus 1 sigma i is equal to 1 to n x i minus x bar whole square. Still, our question is there: Is it a good estimate of sigma square? That will be mathematically verified in the next lecture. In the next lecture, we will be verifying 1 and 4 by examples, and shall provide mathematical proofs of second, third, and fifth. Thank you.